Hi everyone, I'm sitting here with E.G. Milk. Yeah, first of all, um, you've been playing Dota for a very, very long time and you won many online tournaments, etc. You have a huge bunch of experience, but you never won such big LAN tournaments as WDC, SMM, uh, and the International 1 and 2. Why is that? What's what's wrong? I don't know. Maybe we're just not good enough. I don't. I haven't had the the right team or enough skill to beat the uh, the best of the best. Maybe we've always finished uh, top three in all of these tournaments we participated in. Uh, I haven't been. I myself haven't gone to SMM or WDC. Uh, so some people like to call me a land dodger. Although I've been to pretty much every other land, like ESWC. Uh, everything in in America, pretty much everything in in Europe. I've been to eight DreamHacks now, uh, so I don't know why we don't win the major titles. Uh, we do exceptionally well in 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 online play for the most part. We always finish top three. Uh, so yeah, maybe we're not as good on land as we are online. Unfortunately, I'd love to win a major title once. Tell us about uh, the relations with your ex-teammates from NYM. Uh, unfortunately, I have lost contact to Playmate now because he completely quit playing Dota, so I don't talk to him no more. Uh, I don't even know what he's doing now. Uh, Misery just went to China. Uh, Brian is play uh, Mania is playing in uh, Absolute Legends, and I'm still on teams with Demon. Uh, and everyone else who's been with MYM in the past, I think we're, I have a friendly relationship to most of them. Uh, Lacoste as well, I still talk to him a lot. Uh, Hani, who, who plays with Fnatic, I talk to a lot. Uh, so I still consider them some of my best friends online. Uh, so I, I'd say it's, it's, it's good. There's no hard feelings or anything. Uh, so some of them became your competitors, but you still talk with them, like to friends? Yeah, uh, just because you stop playing on teams together doesn't mean you suddenly start hating each other. So, like, whenever I meet uh, Rasmus, who's misery, uh, we still have a lot of fun. Uh, I haven't talked as much with uh, Mania as I, I used to because he's, uh, he's he hasn't played active for, for a long time. He only recently joined Absolute Legends, so I haven't really met him on, on LAN and stuff. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'd consider, th consider them all friends still. You knew many stuff uh, about LGD International roster. From beforehand, you made a tweet with the first letters of their names and stuff. So, the question is, did they propose you to be in the roster? and Or maybe you were proposed to be in other international roster from EG or whatever the team? Uh, no, they didn't. Uh, I think uh, they knew for a fact from the get-go that I would never go to China for that long. Uh, I have a, a life and responsibilities outside of Dota in Denmark that I that I don't want to give up to go to China. I'm, I'm not in the same position they are. I'm not in. The, I'm a bit older than they are, and I have a girlfriend for a long time now who I like being with. Uh, so going to China would mean completely messing Brain. messing up my life. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't even ask. I'm not sure they would have asked anyways. Uh, um, and I've, I've, I've gotten offers for, for several different uh, teams that could have been created, uh, but no existing teams right now. No. So I'm, I'm happy with EG and I'm going to stick to EG and it's hopefully the last team I'm going to play with for as long as I'm a player. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned girlfriend and is this the only reason why you prefer to stay here or maybe you have a job or some university or some family? Uh, She's, she's the primary reason I, I, I wish to stay in Denmark. Uh, we, we did talk and discuss back and forth whether or not to move to the US, uh, especially now that I'm playing for EG, that might be an option. Uh, but moving to Asia was never an option of mine. Uh, and as, as far as family goes, they're not really the ones to, to keep me back. Uh, it's not that I don't like my family, but it's nothing like that that, that makes me, me stay in Denmark. Uh, Educationally-wise, uh, I... I do plan on finishing my master's in journalism at some point, uh, but I'm in no rush right now, even though I'm getting older. Uh, and I had a job, but uh, I've, I've decided to try and focus full-time on Dota for as long as I'm an active player. So I'm just in Denmark because of her mainly. You had a contract uh, with EG. Was it a reason, or 
if you were proposed to join other teams, is this contract so serious that you never decide, uh, you never like think about other possibilities, etc., and uh, you just stick with EG because of the contract? Uh, I don't stick with EG because of the contract. I stick with EG because um, since the first inception of the MYM management, back when MYM was uh, Dan uh, owned by Danish people, I've never really felt comfortable in, a, in an organization. And when I joined EG, and with all the time I've been in EG, I've, I've been uh, pleasantly surprised by how well we've been treated. And uh, the, re the, the relationship I have to the, to the EG team as a whole uh, is really something I'm, I'm comfortable with and, and proud of. Uh, so... Something that's very important for me is to represent someone that I, I truly like and, and respect a lot, and EG fits that profile perfectly. So, obviously, uh, there's cont uh, contractual reasons to why I, I don't want to leave, but it's it's more than that. I wouldn't. Have, I've I just re-signed my contract for 2013, so it, it's nothing to do with the, the contract as such. I, I'm happy in EG. I'm genuinely happy, and I I I, I want to finish in EG. One of our users is interested. If he becomes a pro player, uh, can he in earn enough money for the future 10 years maybe to live and not work and not do anything, just live? I, I think it depends on uh, who he is and what country he lives in. I, I think uh, a team like Navi are probably the only ones who's and of course, there's some of the Chinese teams, IG, uh, who's banked enough money in, in terms of prize money and salaries to, to actually make a living out of it and, and in the long run can live out of their prize winnings. Because right now, uh, players on the Western scene, uh, like American players and West European players, are struggling to even make a living month to month. Uh, I doubt there's a lot of Western European players that can actually make a, a full-time living out of Dota. And uh, unless you're Navi or IG, LGD and DK, I sincerely doubt that you can actually make a living off of it, so I wouldn't bank my money on becoming a pr full-time professional if, if you're in it for the money. Uh, let's talk about the movie. It was only a trailer from Valve, uh, but fear was one of the major figures in that movie. We all saw his monitor yeah. standing on the books. The first question is, did he buy the new monitor? Yeah, I'm sure Fear has a new monitor, yeah. Uh, that that particular clip was, was done one and a half year ago now. It was right after the International won. Uh, and Fear did have a crap PC by then, but he's, he's, he's bought a new one since then. Okay, uh, what do you know about that movie? When will it appear and what will be there like? They have no other lives and Dota helped them to survive, something like that. Yeah. So, what's your opinion? Maybe Valve should make it in another way? Um, you, you know, I, 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 love, uh, I love Valve and I love the people behind the movie especially. Uh, I have a really tight relationship to the guys making it and uh, I'm, I have full confidence in, in that they produce the best movie they see fit. But I would have appreciated a, a different angle. I, I'm not a fan of the whole emotional, dramatic kind of thing. Uh, I'm sure all the players in the movie has a life outside of Dota that would have been respectable to, to give a point of view on that. Uh, I myself is, is recorded for the movie. Uh, they, they visit me for a week and uh, I, I made sure not to empathize the, the weak spots in my life and for that I'm, I'm, I'm not sure I'm even in the movie any longer because I don't think I have had the same sense of drama in my life mm. that the, that some of the others portray. Like you, you know, it's uh, the golden comment from Dendi that uh, he, he could uh, forget all his feelings by playing Dota and 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 fear being kicked out from home and stuff like that. Everyone has their their issues and their problems. It's just a matter of whether or not you choose to display them to the public. And and I chose not to. Uh, whereas. Valve did a better job at catching the other guys' problems. Uh, I would have just focused on on the game and and you know the the players' life without all the drama, maybe. But but I'm sure it's gonna be the best movie ever, anyways. Cause what when when will we see it? <laughs> you know, the first time they they gave me a a timeline, it was around March or April 2012. So they've gone way 
past that, but but the product is going to be so much better that now they're trying to b b make the best documentary in the world, not just the best gaming documentary, but the best documentary as a whole. Uh, and they're going to go for for awards for it, and they wanted to reach a broad audience. Uh, I'm guessing, if you, you if you ask me right now with Valve time in mind, I'm guessing January, February. But uh, they will show it in the cinemas, or it will be on YouTube, and uh, that's it. I think it will be. Uh, I think it will be an online documentary. It will be available to the to the, the whole gaming crowd and and stuff like that. Because if they did put it in a cinema, it, it might lose a big audience. So I'm I'm guessing they will do it online. Mm -hmm. Few words about DreamHack finally. So you finished only second in the group, and you lost to Not Eye Hunter. Was it a disappointing, or you just made too many mistakes, or describe what happened? Uh, I think, uh, first of all, it was very disappointing, our performance yesterday, not just the No Tidehunter game, but uh, the game following that against uh, Krillip plus four friends. Uh, we've, I myself have had a terrible month of, of Dota playtime, I've played really, really bad and I'm not at all satisfied with how I play, but the team as a whole played really, really bad yesterday as well. And uh, without saying too much, like I think we went, we all went to bed very disappointed in ourselves. Uh, we played a bad game, and we're gonna make up for it tonight. Hopefully, uh, we've seen some of the replays, and we've gone through all our mistakes. And there was a lot of mistakes, so we want to try and improve that and see if we can do it in our upcoming quarterfinal match. Uh, first places, well, obviously Navi are the best. Maybe at this tournament and in the world, but uh, who are you afraid of besides Navi, who was first in their group? I think, uh, aside from Navi, I think uh, Empire is probably the team that that looks the strongest. They really have their strategies down. Uh, they they know how their playstyle works and and how to dominate their opponent and. More importantly, I think uh, some of the players are really peaking right now. I think a player like Fonik is potentially the best player in Ukraine and in Europe as a whole. He's playing so superbly well. And uh, I think even a team like Navi would be wise to fear him, in a sense. Uh, he could easily topple most of their players, if not all of them. Uh, so, so I think Empire is, is the, the best candidate for a grand final. Even they are playing without blow? Yeah, yes, I think uh, Blow's role was. Uh, I'm not saying it's easy to replace because it's it's the hard carry, but uh, but uh, Sox already beat Navi once, first of all, and is a very very stable uh, carry player. And with with the way that Empire plays, they don't really rely too much on Blow to begin with. Uh, Phonic makes so much room for his team. Scandal is a, is an exceptionally good solo mid, uh, and the supports are doing their job. So I, I'm. I can still picture them take the title if they want to. Okay, uh, if you will lose in the quarterfinal, will your team disband or roster changes or something like that? No, I, don't, uh, I sincerely doubt it. Uh, even if we l do lose in the quarterfinal, uh, we, we'll have a lot of work ahead of us and and a lot of problems to to, to work out, obviously. But uh, we're trying to establish a, a stable roster for once, and uh, we're happy with the, the, the team and the call right now, so we're just going to work out our, our flaws. This is the first time uh, Beatus is on LAN, uh, it's the second time J.O. is, and uh, you know, it's the first time we're on LAN together as a team, uh, up against teams like Navi, who's had countless of, of, of LAN tournaments together, so... I'm not too worried even if we do fail this tournament. Uh, you you got to look ahead and, and stability is one of the main reasons you can even do well at a tournament like the International. So if we want to compete at the International 3, we need to stick together and work out the flaws instead of just always pointing fingers. And more importantly, like there's going to be seasons of, of your career where you you don't play as well as you've, you've done. And I'm in one of those slumps right now, so this is something I want to try and rise above and, and get my skill back up. To, to be able to compete with the best of the best, and hopefully I can turn around this tournament. Uh, in general, the American scene seems to like upgrade in their recent times, but uh, also the Scandinavian Dota scene, like we see Freedom Max here, like Pulse and other teams. Uh, can you compare this 
to, for example, Chinese, maybe American dot thing will have this, the bright future? I think uh, both the American and the European ceiling will definitely have a brighter future, but there's still, there's still so much space or skill gap between the Chinese and the rest of the world that there are no position to actually topple any of the Chinese teams yet uh, and probably won't be for, the, for a long time because of experience and better practice conditions. Uh, but the American scene has, is, is definitely growing stronger. They're just not going to be able to compete with the Chinese, but they're going to be able to compete with the American scene in, inbound and with the European scene as a whole. And I think Navi is going to have a bit more competition than they're used to, I hope so, anyways, because they've had a very easy year during 2012, and hopefully 2013 will be different, where there's going to come some American and European teams that can actually challenge them for the king of Europe. In USA, there is a stereotype, you know, that beers, bears walk streets in Russia and everyone drinks vodka. You live most of your life here, so what do you know about Russia, and do you believe in this stereotype? No, not, not, not with the bears. Uh, I think there's, uh, from what I understand, it's uh, cold for the most part in Russia. Uh, the male population dies in an earlier age than, than the, the female population. Um, and uh, you drink a lot of vodka. I think that's uh, the stereotype that uh, the Western European community has to, towards the Russian scene. But other than that, it's, it's pretty much just like any other European country. Like, uh, you're, you're more hardworking than the Greek people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So. Um, and about Dota players, some say that Russians ruin their games, etc. Valve must make new servers for Russians. What do you think about that? I think it's because uh, the Russian Dota population is so much bigger than the rest of the European one. So there's going to be a lot of a lot of uh, bad seats in between. There's probably percentage-wise as many good Russians as there's bad behaving Russians uh, and and the fact that they always write in Russian probably piss off the rest of the world a lot because you don't understand what they're saying uh, so that's that's mostly it I don't think Russia is necessarily any worse than Denmark or America for that matter so that's just a that's just the problem of Russia being as big as it is and uh, do you know some words in Russian like any words I know uh, Pushing the hui, so si detka, kaktela, ochweno, morph, name. And, that, and that's about it, you know, uh, how do you do, fine, how do you business? Yeah. suck my... <laughs> so you know what it means. I, I know a bit of it, yeah. Uh, final shout outs, any final words? Yeah, a huge shout out to, to my team, ET, and our sponsors, Red Call, who's our title sponsor, Steel Series, Kingston HyperX, Intel, Monster Energy for the most part. We drink that all day. So, yeah, a big thanks to them for sending us to DreamHack once more. It's a big tournament, and we're happy to be here. Okay, that was Smile from EG, uh, especially for Pro Dota. Thanks, see you.